Today I've been taking a look at DTMF turns, and the thing that got me thinking about this was a, a thread that I actually spotted on Reddit where someone was talking about the, uh, the keypad and why they added the extra star and hash buttons to the keypad uh, to match the number of DTMF turns if you included A, B, C and D, which were special channels used by military. So, uh, lots of thanks to this dial ABC site, I've kind of used this to pick up all the, all the information I needed. And here you can see that there are 16 distinct different DTMF tones, 0 through 9, A through D, and then star and hash. And that kind of got me thinking, oh well that's quite uh, interesting because there are also 16 values in a hexadecimal number, so uh, 0 through 9 and then A through F. And it'd be really cool to try using DTMF to actually encode data into almost music. So using different DTMF notes, each of which corresponding to a hexadecimal value to create a, a tune, I suppose, that can relay data to somebody on the other end that understands the encoding method you've used. So my first step was to take a look at this website, figure out all the different bands, and turns out the Audacity, uh, a free kind of audio software, is capable of generating DTMF tones uh, just natively. You don't have to fiddle around with anything. You can just generate DTMF tones, which is really great. And then I looked up a little ASCII converter to let me know what hexadecimal values related to what ASCII characters. So here you can see I've just written, hello, how are you? And for each of the ASCII characters used, including the spaces, I've uh, worked out what the uh, the hexadecimal value for that ASCII character is and just written it on and then mapped those to DTMF where the numbers match directly and the letters match directly up to of course E and F where E is the star and F is the hash. So following on from that um, I went into Audacity and I'll open that file up here and I've got uh, each of those tones in order, so just for now I'm just doing hello, so 48656C6C6F is what is, is in here. If I play this... First of all, it sounds awful, but um, I run I ran that kind of sound clip through a detect DTMF tones function that this dial ABC website has, and it uh, pumped back out the correct numbers, so 48656C6C6 hash. And if I ran those back through my conversion, I'd get hello. So that's quite cool, that shows that this can work, that I can encode the data into the audio file, and then that I have a method of reading said audio file to work out what it says. So I really the next thing I want to do is try and make it sound somewhat like a, a tune rather than just which you know obviously. So that's what I'm going to try and do now and I'll get back to you soon. Right so I finished my little file and um, it now says the or contains data for the entire message hello comma space how are you? with a question mark at the end, and um, it sounds like this. And obviously that isn't... <laughs> greatly musical or anything, but it's a bit more interesting than just constant notes of equal length after each other. Um, but that's kind of a look into how you could potentially make interesting tunes, I suppose, make, uh, using this method. But the, the main thing here is that that audio data contains an actual message. Um, so if we look back here to uh, Dial ABC, it's running that tone through an algorithm that can get back out the numbers and uh, giving us the correct numbers down here are the correct uh, DTMF tones down here that relate to what we put in. And then if we used our little 
uh, comparison algorithm, well, it's, it's not even that really, to go between those numbers and hexadecimal, which only com requires a conversion of the hash and the star uh, to be E and F, then we get back the hexadecimal values which can then be converted to the ASCII characters. So you could send this, uh, this audio file to somebody else with a, a hidden message in it. They could run it through a decoder and get the message back. So this is a really good example of how encoding works and when people use encoding to, to encode data online, uh, they'll use a similar, well, they won't encode it in audio, but they'll use a method like this where there's some conversion and then some conversion back. Usually there's also an aspect that's linked to a random variable of some sort. Um, encoding that is constant is very, very easy to crack like this. But if you kind of input some random element as well, then your encoding can become a lot more secure. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something as well. Now, this video was a bit of a shorter form compared to my previous one. I went into a lot less detail and kind of didn't flesh out the idea massively. Um, if that's a good format, then I'm looking for feedback on that, so please let me know.